Welcome to our video tutorial series on Destiny Library Manager. Today's topic is how to set up and complete an inventory using Destiny Library Manager. Hi everyone, we are here today to talk to you about everyone's favorite topic, inventory. We know that at the mere mention of inventory, you are all pounding your heads against the desk. However, one of the best things you can do for your students and your collections is to do an inventory. Inventory is not as difficult as you think, and you will be so glad that you took the time to do an inventory. A few reasons why you might wanna do an inventory, it's gonna give you a snapshot of what is actually in your library, and particularly after this last year uh, where book return was delayed significantly, it's gonna help you clean up your collection and then make your collection analysis as accurate as possible. So when you go to do those orders, you know exactly what you have in your library. Another thing is that inventory is required by state law and school district of Palm Beach County board policy. And every year we ask you to report what you've done for your inventory. Now, before you do an inventory, something that you're really going to want to do so that you don't lose your eBooks in your inventory, you're going to need to batch update the CERC type of eBooks from CERC type regular to CERC type eBook. And you're also gonna to wanna to clean up your in transit list. Now, to batch update those eBooks. You're going to go to reports, report builder and run the material type equals eBook report. You're then gonna to go to report manager and click view and download that Excel file to your desktop. Save it using a name that you can remember. You're gonna highlight column A to highlight the barcodes and copy those barcodes. You will paste barcodes into a notepad file and save it where you can easily find it. Save it to your desktop. It's easy to find. Name the file ebook update. And then you're going to follow these numbered steps to upload, upload your notepad file and update your ebook copies. Okay. We are going to put these directions on Library Current so you can easily find them and do this before you start your inventory. I'm gonna turn it over to Holly now. Hey everybody, we present a window for you. So in a second, you should see setup tips for inventory. So here's your first four steps. I'm gonna show you this live in Destiny in just a minute. You wanna create a name for your inventory that describes the area that you're inventory. This is for your future reference. It has nothing to do with what Destiny sees in the inventory. It could care less what you name it. So you need to name it something that reminds you what section you're working on. You need to carefully select the CERC types. Always keep in mind this rule of thumb. Destiny operates inventory. It looks at two things the call number of the item, and the cert type of the item. So those two things have to be within the parameters for it to register as accounted for in your inventory. Now, unless you have very carefully and consistently created sublocations and use them perfectly, you should just leave them all checked and not just pick one sublocation. And that's a topic for another discussion, but for safety sakes, just use all the sublocations. And you wanna check the box next to check self shelf order. And we'll show you why in a second. So let me leave this slide. And go to destiny. I am in admin and I've clicked inventory on the left. When you have um, no inventory in progress, this will be blank. I'm starting a new inventory by clicking the button on the far right. 
start new. Now I can march through the steps that we just discussed. I'm going to name this inventory non-fiction all because I'm going to inventory my entire non-fiction collection. Now, remember, Destiny doesn't care that I named this nonfiction, but it does care what I put for call numbers. I'm going to put the entire range of nonfiction, 000 to 999.99. This is going to make Destiny look at all my nonfiction call numbers. So that I can inventory just books, I'm going to update the circulation types by clearing all, and in this case, I'm going to choose regular, because regular is the default circ type for all print books. This should eliminate equipment, ebooks, all kinds of textbooks, professional materials intended for teachers that are most likely in the Dewey number 370-something, because that's education, It'll also eliminate my reference book collection if I still have reference book titles. So I'm regular only, I'm saying okay. Again, we said we're going to leave the, um, the, uh, the sublocations alone. So all, it's telling you what it's going to do. All copies meeting the above criteria will be set to unaccounted for, not found, except copies that have been seen before, on, or after today. So we're going to show you a slide. It's going to explain what that means. It's actually setting your titles to unaccounted for, and you have to scan each one to tell Destiny you've accounted for that exact copy. Okay? Okay. So let's go back to our slides and review a bit. Here's a reminder and you'll get these slides. The call number ranges for your inventory are fairly simple. You can do a single Dewey range. This example in the middle will do only the 500s. You could do 600 to 699, 000 to 100, whatever you wanted to do. You can do your entire fiction section simply by doing F to F. You can do your entire easy book collection by doing E to E. This first example you need to pay close attention to. Everything, if you leave it blank, you have set up an inventory that will make destiny look for all call numbers. That means it's going to make you identify every single copy in your library. And if you don't do that, it's going to set those items to lost. So, I mean, sometimes you might be able to do every single title section in your library. But um, if you're not doing that, don't leave this blank. This is how people erase their collections. Okay, so think about that when you do it. All right, so let's make sure I'm on the next slide. Here's what happens when you click Start New. Set up those parameters you just saw me do, and you click Start. It's taking everything that you described and making it unaccounted for, every single copy. Then as you scan it, scan that section, it's accounting for those titles one at a time. When you skip one or don't find it, it's not there for you to scan. Those copies are listed as unaccounted for. They stay unaccounted for. And those roll over to your loss list when you complete the inventory. Now, there are a few types of items that don't automatically revert to unaccounted for when you open an inventory. All your books that are checked out, Destiny's going to ignore those. It's not gonna make them unaccounted for and make you scan them to fix it. Anything loaned out, anything on order, anything set to status out for repairs, 
anything in transit, Destiny's just not going to look at it. It's not going to make it unaccounted for. It's not going to make you scan it to make it show as accounted for. It's not going to set it to lost. Checked out, loaned out, on order, out for repairs, or in transit. It ignores those. This is why it's good to do an inventory while your library is in active use. Because there's less books to inventory if a lot of them are checked out. They're already accounted for. Destiny knows. Billy has this one. Susie has that one. They're accounted for. So when you scan, it moves them from unaccounted for to the new uh, uh, accounted for list. And if there's a problem with that particular copy, you will get a RAS sound and a, a red box, an alert that tells you something was wrong with this copy. Something like this item had originally been set to lost. It is now uh, set to available. This copy was set to lost and Johnny Jones was charged for it. A refund has been generated. Now you owe Johnny Jones his money back because you found his book on the shelf. And it, the inventory process automatically creates a refund on that student's screen. Any copy that you accidentally shelved still checked out to a person will be automatically checked in. It may offer you a button that says create a fine. Please don't click create a fine. The book was on the shelf. They couldn't return it. You already had it. You stuck it on the shelf. There's no reason to create a font. So you just ignore that button and keep moving in your inventory. But it does tell you what's going on with individual books. So by completing an inventory, you're actually finding lots of problems and correcting them. You're recovering copies you thought were lost. Destiny had a mark lost. And it actually counts the usable material in your library. So you really know, yes, I have 12,000 fiction copies. Maybe originally you thought you had 15,000. So you've lost a few. This also is what makes our collection analysis tools meaningful. If you've not done an inventory in years, stuff is lost. Stuff is sitting there checked out. Stuff is um, missing that you don't even know about. And so therefore, de Destiny is only as good as your most recent correctly completed inventory. Because it can say you have things that were lost 10 years ago if you haven't been doing an inventory. So it makes your collection analysis and Destiny accurate and useful. The reports are only as good as the data that's in there. So this improves the data inside Destiny. So please, inventory a significant third of your collection each year. School board policy actually states that, that one third of the collection needs to be inventoried on a rotating basis, a three year rotation. That doesn't mean that you only inventory every third year. It means you do something every year, one third every year. And you need to record that um, pattern in your collection development plan so you can remember, in 2020, I inventoried fiction. In 2021, I inventoried nonfiction. In 2022, I'll inventory easy. And then I will circle back around in 2023, I will inventory fiction and keep going in a cycle so that one third of the collection is inventoried over a period of three years. Now, this is a, this is a gimme. It's, a, it's a, um, a pass that the school district is giving everyone because we are um, uh, stressed for time and we have less staff than we used to have years ago. State law actually requires textbooks and there's no gimme on that. They have to be re re, uh, inventoried every year by state statute. And library materials are instructional materials by um, the definition of, of um, the legislature. So technically we should be doing the whole collection every year, but that's very difficult with the teaching responsibilities everyone has. So school board policy makes it a little more lenient and you're allowed to do one third at a time. But Inventorying your entire collection, if you have a clerk, if you have 
volunteers and can get the entire uh, collection inventory, you and your students will benefit because your analysis will be that much more accurate and it be accurate every year instead of just well part of it. So it's really a, a good plan if you can, but with only one person staffing a library, that's very difficult. So it's not expected. Lisa, I think you have some closing thoughts about the end of the year reporting and, and the part that inventory plays in that. Uh, yes, um, every year we will ask you to report your data to us at the end of the year. We need you to leave your completed inventories for that year in Destiny. We will go in and check to make sure that an inventory was completed. So please make sure that you leave that data in Destiny. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on Destiny Library Manager. Today's topic was setting up and completing an inventory using Destiny Library Manager. For more information on today's topic or any other topic concerning Destiny Library Manager, please contact Library Media Services. For more information on the products shared during this presentation, visit our website, librarycurrent.palmbeachschools.org or visit our YouTube channel, PBCSD Library Media Services.